Uh, hi everyone, my name is Sana. I hope you are doing well. I am the financial aid advisor at McEwen. And um, so without further ado, let's start with the treaty acknowledgement. Uh, I would like to acknowledge that the land on which we gather in Treaty 6 territory is the traditional gathering place for many Indigenous people. We honour and respect the history, languages, ceremonies, and culture of the First Nations, Métis, and Inuit who call this territory home. The First People's connection to the land teaches us about our inherent responsibility to protect and respect Mother Earth. With this acknowledgement, we honour the ancestors and children who have been here missing and murdered Indigenous women and men, and the process of ongoing collective healing for all human beings. We are reminded that we are all treaty people and of the responsibility we have to one another. So on behalf of the Fees and Financial Aid Team, I would like to formally welcome you to McEwen. Thank you for joining the new student orientation session for Fees and Financial Aid. Uh, just so you're aware, this session is being recorded. So, uh, I am joined here also with my colleague, Claire. Uh, she is a senior financial aid advisor, and we both work at the Office of the University Registrar for the Fees and Financial Aid Department, which is in Building 7 on the So our team deals with student loans, fees, and awards. And joining us are Ryan and Kristen from RBC Bank. Uh, RBC is located here at McEwen in the SAMU building. They will be giving you information about RBC scholarships and lines of credit through RBC. And during this presentation, we'll specifically be speaking to you about important dates, deadlines, fees, scholarships, awards, bursaries, and student loans. After that, I'll pass it off to Kristen and Ryan. And at the end, we will be answering any questions that you may have. Also, you can ask questions in our chat. Okay, so let's move on. Let's move on to important dates and deadlines. So I've listed them out in of date. So the our classes start September 8th for the fall term, as most of you may know. Uh, and then scholarships, awards, bursaries, they open the first week of classes. The add and drop date for regular class sessions is September 17th, meaning this is the last date to make any adjustments to your schedule. After this date, there will be no tuition and fee adjustment. For example, if you withdraw from a course after September 17th, you are responsible for the fees for that course. Tuition and fees deadline is September 30th. Payments can be made via my student system using your credit card. Uh, you can make in-person payments, but we are only accepting debit and check. Uh, there is also a drop-off box for checks. Uh, you can also use online banking, uh, which is way you, it's similar to paying a bill. I'll tell you where to go at the end of this to, to for the directions on how to make the payment online. Uh, and the preferred method, I would say, is online banking. And uh, be aware that if you are making a payment with your credit card through my student system, there is a fee as service fee associated. And for more information on how to make a payment, you can go to mcewen.ca slash make a payment. And also for students, students are responsible for all fees associated on their student account. So please keep an eye on your account. Uh, I'll explain that a little bit further to the presentation. Balances not paid will accrue interest at 1% per month after September 30th. And if balances are not paid, you are at risk of being dropped from future terms. So now we'll go over the term enrollment and account summary. The term enrollment and account summary gives you a breakdown of your fees. So you know how much you're being charged for tuition, mandatory fees, program fees, etc. Uh, it also shows you credits towards your account, so any tuition payments that we receive from you uh, or student loans as well. It'll show you any scholarships that you would have received uh, or any refunds. So this is a great document to keep for your records uh, and I will show you how to access it. So uh, all the information is on the slide. So if you log into myportal.mcuman.ca and launch my student system. Uh, from there, also keep in mind, uh, please ensure that the pop-up blockers, any that you have, 
on your browser are disabled because this document does come up as a PDF on a new tab. So once you, you have launched My Student System, click on the Manage Classes tile and from there select Enrollment and Account Summary and then select the term. And then a PDF will open and you can save that or you can print it. Okay, so now that we've spoken about the fees, let's move on to the types of awards that we have. Within McEwen, we have three types of awards. Uh, the types are scholarships, awards, and bursaries. And I'll be explaining to you the general criteria, requirements, and value of each award. And like I said, this is general information because most of uh, the awards that we have do have specific criteria. So in terms of the value, as you can see from the slide, the value is pretty similar for each of the award types, and it ranges from $500 to $5,000, with $1,000 being the most consistent value awarded. So let's start with scholarships. Scholarships are awarded based on exceptional academic performance, so students can either apply for awards or they'll be nominated for them. One of the general requirements is that students must be enrolled in a minimum of 12 credits per term. Next is awards. So awards are based on leadership and volunteerism within the community. So depending on the award, there might be additional criteria such as, as uh, academic performance and or financial need. And awards typically require a written submission, so students do have to apply for them. And then any full-time student can apply for awards. So basically anyone with nine credits or more. Bursaries are the last type of award. Bursaries are based on financial needs. So students apply for bursaries and they must submit financial information to verify that they are in fact in financial need. Uh, financial need is determined by taking the value of monthly expenses and subtracting it from monthly income sources. And uh, if there is a negative value produced from that, then students are considered in financial need because their monthly costs exceed their monthly income. And just to note, uh, if you are taking out student loans, student loans are not included in the monthly income, and that is stated on the applications as well. So just a fun fact, uh, during the 2021 academic year, our office dispersed approximately 3,200 awards uh, with a value of approximately 5.3 to 5.4 million dollars. So now that we have talked about the definition of each award, let's go over how you can apply. So during the first week of classes, every student that's enrolled at McEwen will receive an email notifying them that the applications are open. And uh, then you must be wondering where you would apply through. So applications are available via My Student System. Due to our generous donors, McEwen has many different awards with various criteria. So all award information is available to students. To view, you can head to mcewen.ca slash awards. And there is a search bar at the top which allows you to search for keywords. Uh, you can also search by your program, award type, uh, level of study, meaning if you're a continuing or entrance student, uh, and student status. So if you would want to look for awards that are specifically for Canadian citizens or for international students, you can do that as well. So when applications open, however, uh, you'll only be able to see awards which you qualify for. So some awards are limited to certain programs or to certain to students in a specific year of study, etc. Keep in mind, uh, there are no applications for awards that are nominations. Uh, for those awards, students are selected by our program office. When I say awards, I, I just mean in general scholarships, bursaries, or I, I use that word interchangeably at the moment. Uh, so as mentioned at the beginning of the presentation, uh, applications for fall open the first week of classes in September, and then for winter applications are open the first week of classes in January. Uh, so once students are in my student system, they'll be able to see the closing date for the awards as well. Most of our awards close at the end of September, but there are some that may close sooner than that, or even later. Once awards close, if uh, it can take some time to select a recipient because we do have a number of people 
apply. So students are selected for awards in November for the fall term and March for the winter term. And once a student is, is selected in our system, they receive an email stating the name of the award and the value. Also, in order for us to disperse awards, students must have their social insurance number inputted into our system. So now that we've talked about scholarships within McEwen, let's talk about Alberta government scholarships that McEwen promotes. So there are many government scholarships, but we'll specifically be talking about the three most popular scholarships students apply for and how exactly to apply for them. Um, and are limited on time, so there is more criteria for each award, but I'll be giving you a general overview of each. And um, if you need more information, I would recommend visiting studentaid.alberta.ca and clicking scholarships along the a scholarship tab along the top of the web page. So the first government scholarship we'll talk about is the Alexander Rutherford, valued at up to $2,500 per award. This award is for students entering university from high school. So applicants are so are applications are submitted through student. Uh, through your student aid Alberta account. Uh, students are selected based on the grades which come from their Alberta high school transcripts. Students may only be awarded the Alexander Rutherford scholarship once and in November is when student aid Alberta sends out checks to students. So the next award is the Jason Lang valued at $1,000 per scholarship. This scholarship is given to students starting in their second year or later. For this scholarship, the GPA requirement is a 3.2 on a 4.0 scale with an 80% uh, full course load in the previous fall and winter terms. Also, this scholarship can be given out a maximum of um, three times in a student's lifetime. And just going back to the 80% course load, 80% uh, of a full, full course load is 12 credits per term. The application for this award is through McEwen via My Student System. We do have students who are transferring from other institutions, so anyone who's transferring from another institution would apply through McEwen, and that is as long as you've completed both fall and winter terms in the previous institution. Once the applications close, McEwen sends a pre-screened list of nominees to Alberta Student Aid, and Alberta Student Aid sends out checks for those scholarships. The last uh, award we'll be talking about is the Louise McKinney Post-Secondary Scholarship valued at $2,500. This scholarship is available in the fall term only. Uh, students in their second year and later are eligible to apply for this scholarship. There is a limited number of scholarships awarded annually and McEwen chooses the top 90, so McEwen's top 90 students are selected based on their academic standing. The criteria for the Louise McKinney is the same as the Jason Lang. However, students who are nominated for the Jason Lang within the same academic year are not eligible for the Louise McKinney Scholarship. So this concludes our information about scholarships and bursaries, and we'll move to student loans and grant funding. So let's talk about eligibility for student loans and things to consider prior to applying. So in order to apply for a student loan, you must be either a Canadian citizen, permanent resident, or have a protected person status. The next thing to consider when applying for student loans is to establish which province you would apply for. So since we are located in Alberta and a majority of our students are Alberta residents, I will be talking about Alberta student loans specifically. Uh, we do have students from various other provinces. So if you have any questions about your province, uh, can ask us uh, at the end or you can email us or you can enter it into the chat. Uh, so going back to establishing residency, residency is established differently for independent and dependent students. So let's talk about what makes you a independent or dependent student. So for independent students, you are considered uh, independent if you are married or common law, divorced, separated, widowed, uh, you have at least one dependent child, 23 years of age or older, uh, been out of high school for at least four years, and have been available for, for full-time work for at least two years since leaving high school. And then any other student that doesn't fit that category is considered a dependent student. So for Alberta residency, uh, 
you're considered uh, an Alberta resident if Alberta is the last province in which you most recently lived for 12 consecutive months while not a full-time post-secondary student or you've never lived in any other Canadian province for 12 consecutive months and are attending a post-secondary school in Alberta. Uh, and then for dependents, you are an Alberta resident if at least one of your parents lives in Alberta. So uh, if you are considered an independent student, you do not need to provide your parents' income. Dependent students are required to submit their parents' income, and this will help them get a census for grants. So there are two types of there are two types of applications, one for full-time students and another for part-time students. Uh, here's how to differ, differentiate between the two. So if you're taking nine credits or more, you apply for a full-time application. And if you're taking less than nine credits, apply for a part-time application. Uh, applicants are considered for both loans and grants in one application. To be clear, loans uh, are an amount that you need to pay back to student aid, and grants are not repayable to the government. Applicants are assessed for grants based on their income, marital status, uh, if they have a disability, and if they have if they have dependents. When applying, the best practice would be to apply for both fall and winter terms at the same time. And then if you decide that you would like to attend spring summer classes, please finalize your schedule before applying for funding. Otherwise, there can be possible delays in receiving your funding. Uh, and as students, you want to ensure each loan year, each academic year that you're applying for a new loan, student aid requires new applications each year. So, and this is the same for uh, other provinces as well. So once your loan is approved, you'll get a letter uh, stating the breakdown of how much you'll receive in loans and grants. And there is a limit per term, which you can see below. Uh, grants are assessed on top of that. So for one term, you can receive up to 7,500 in loans, and for two terms, 15,000, three, 22,500. And like I said, on, grants can be assessed on top of that. Okay, so now comes the time to apply for your loans uh, if you haven't already done so. If you plan to use student loans to pay for your education but you haven't applied yet i would highly suggest doing that as soon as possible it is a busy time for student aid uh, so it can take time for your application to be assessed uh, and as mentioned previously the deadline for tuition is september 30th so going back to how you can apply uh, you can go to to studentaid.alberta.ca and once you go to the home page you can see that there's two login options like um, and so if you're applying for the first time you would click start here and if you're a returning student you can click log in for a step-by-step -step guide on how to apply click apply on the top of the studentaid.alberta.ca website and you can click on there how to apply and once you scroll through you can see that there's two videos posted, both of which are very informative. Um, one video will show you how to create a student aid account, and then the other will show you how to complete your application. Uh, so in order to apply student for a student aid account, students must have a social insurance number. Full-time applications are completed entirely online, while part-time applications are PDF slash paper applications, uh, and they can be submitted electronically as PDFs on your student aid account. If you are completing a part-time application, there is a section for the educational institution to fill out. So you'll need to email that to studentloans at mcewin.ca and the section is section five on that application. Okay, so now let's talk about uh, how you would receive your funding, so the disbursement. So I'll go over the steps, uh, I'll go over all the steps of how you can receive your funding and how McEwen receives it as well. So first things first, uh, after your loan is approved, make sure to complete the Alberta Student Aid Agreement and the Canada MSFAA. Also check your student aid account for any other required documentation. As long as your loan was approved, you're enrolled in your classes, and your student statu status matches the type of loan you've applied for, so if you applied for a full-time or part-time loan, uh, it has to match what it says on our system as well. 
then from there McEwen will confirm your loan and you will receive an email stating so. If you, your loan is not confirmed, uh, you'll also receive an email which tells you the reason it's not confirmed. Please uh, read those emails because they'll give you information important information as to why your loan wasn't approved. Uh, the common reason students' loans are not confirmed by us is if a student is not full-time and they apply for a full-time loan, and the reason is if their program name that they apply with, uh, that they use to apply for their student aid uh, loan isn't the same as what's in our system. Uh, also, if you if you enter our the dates incorrectly and then it doesn't match in our system as well. So, And then McEwen did start confirming loans as of last week. So now you must be wondering, how are my tuition and fees paid? So what happens is that McEwen requests the tuition directly from the government. Uh, so it is sent to us, and then the remainder is deposited into the student's bank account. You may remember completing the candidate the Alberta Student Aid Agreement and the Canada MSFAA and providing your banking information. So the reason you provided that information was so that once your tuition and fees are paid to McEwen, student aid can deposit the rest into your bank account. And depending on how much money you receive in your loan, uh, all or a portion of what you of what is deposited into your account uh, is to pay for your books and uh, any living allowances. Also, it can take about, um, uh, once we confirm you, about a week for you to receive your funding. And, uh, you receive your funding before McEwen receives the funding. So you may look on your account and see that there's a balance. And so eventually we do receive it. But you might see a balance on your account and wonder about that. So students are responsible for all fees assessed on their account. Uh, there is sort of a caveat to McEwen requesting tuition directly from the government. When McEwen confirms your student loan, uh, we might not be able to request the full cost of tuition and fees due to a limit imposed by student aid. If that's the case, the amount we cannot request would come to your bank account. Therefore, if there is a balance remaining on your account, you must ensure that it's paid. As mentioned uh, earlier, interest does accrue after September 30th on any unpaid loans. Okay, so um, let's talk about repayment. So this may be far, far down the line for many students, uh, but let's talk about repayments. Um, most students receive receive loans. They receive them from both the federal and provincial governments. And due to both governments being separate entities, students are required to pay each each government back separately. So when does loan payment actually begin? Uh, it begins six months after you graduate from university. That's also when interest starts accruing on your. And we may have some students here with previous student loans. If that's the case, please look at studentaid.alberta.ca for more information on how to keep your loan interest-free while studying. The current interest rate by default is CIBC's uh, prime rate plus 1%, uh, and the current prime rate is 2.45. This is for Alberta student loans. And uh, just so you're aware, there this is a floating rate that the uh, that the government charges you. So by default, student aid charges you the floating rate. But if you want, you can apply for a fixed rate before repayment starts. And uh, Canada student loans have temporarily suspended interest uh, due to COVID. And usually the prime rate, uh, the interest rate is the prime rate by default. Uh, it's worth mentioning also that there are repayment supports available for students who are experiencing who are experiencing financial burdens, uh, but those options are to be explored once repayment begins, so six months after you graduate. And, uh, like I said, this information will be used mostly in the future for most students, but it's good to be aware. This concludes uh, the present, uh, my portion of the presentation, but before I go, uh, this is our contact information, uh, which can also be found on the McEwen website. So our phone number is 
497-5025. You can ask to speak with a financial aid advisor. Um, we also have a toll-free number for international students. So, so one 497 4622 extension 5025. Three emails that you can contact us through. They each are for separate inquiries. So you can contact student loans at mcumen.ca for inquiries on student loans, awards at mcumen.ca for inquiries about scholarships, awards, and bursaries, and fees, fee services at mcumen.ca for inquiries about fees. Uh, like I said before, we are located in the office of the Registrar, which is in Building 7 on the main floor in the main city center campus. And our off office hours are Monday to Friday, 8 4.30 to 8.30. Sorry, <laughs> 8.30 to 4.30. Okay, uh, so with that, I will pass it off to Ryan from RBC. Uh, once Ryan has done his portion, we will answer some questions. Uh, and if we're not able to answer your questions, please email us and refer to again, the slides for questions. Uh, so now I'll pass it off to Ryan. Take it away, Ryan. Wonderful. Thanks so much, Sana. Uh, hopefully my audio is coming through loud and clear so everyone can hear me without issue. And uh, yeah, so I'm actually broadcasting from our RBC on campus space here on the main floor of the uh, SAMU building. So the one, the brand new Fresh Students Association building, they wanted us to be here on campus because they understand uh, that uh, financial stress uh, can certainly be something that many students experience. And we always like to uh, co-host with uh, someone from Fees and Financial Aid to share some other means for you to help fund your education alongside those student loans that you should apply for and of course the scholarships and awards that we highly encourage you to look into as well. So I'm going to touch on a few different uh, things, not only scholarships from RBC, but also uh, just kind of point you into the direction of some others. Um, a little bit about myself, I'm an advisor here, um, so I am joined by my manager, Kristen, and the two of us are the dynamic duo that kind of runs the show here in our little space. We're not here to push product, we are here to support students understanding how to manage their money, build credit, savings, uh, manage a budget, that sort of thing, as well as career development opportunities like building your brand and how to create a great LinkedIn profile and, uh, you know, how to search for jobs. So we're here on, on a multiple different uh, levels as well as uh, just trying to promote student wellness by partnering with different services on campus and pointing you in the right direction. Um, so you can stop by anytime to speak with us, whether it be banking related stuff, career development or otherwise, and it doesn't matter if you're an RBC client or not, we welcome everyone. We are here to complement the existing resources and programming that are already on campus. Um, so with that, uh, the way that I wanted to start things off was talking about a scholarship that RBC has through the Future Launch program. So if you Google search RBC Future Launch, it is a program that RBC uh, kind of has started, I think it was about four or five years ago, with a significant amount of funding to help promote getting uh, youth and uh, students, young adults, uh, more prepared for the jobs that are going to be available to you when you graduate. Now, as you can see here on the screen, the scholarship is available to someone who's maybe only enrolled part-time or not going to school at all. So if you are a full-time student, but maybe you have a friend or someone else that you know uh, who's maybe doing a gap year or they're just kind of easing into school, uh, please let them know about this. Now, the one important thing is that this uh, scholarship, I think the application deadline is going to be on uh, Wednesday, September 1st. Uh, so, you know, if you are interested, uh, you are a permanent resident um, or a, a Canadian citizen, then please apply. Uh, we did have a student last year apply for it and receive that $1,500 in funding, uh, and he made great use of it. So, um, we know that it's something that McEwen students can certainly uh, take advantage of, um, and uh, we encourage you just to give it a shot. That's the main thing with any scholarship, whether it's one of our own or the others that Sana spoke to. Uh, it's important just to take the opportunity. Maybe 30 minutes to an hour could be well worth your while. Um, don't be discouraged by some of the maybe daunting requirements or otherwise. Just give it a shot. Not all scholarships are related to your grades. Uh, and this one certainly isn't. You'll really just be asked to say how you would use the money, how it could benefit you, and that's what uh, they, uh, they kind of look at in terms of criteria for being able to provide that to someone. So um, moving on uh, to the next slide, um, I'll discuss uh, a couple more different scholarships that are available or different programs. Um, so 
it, you can Google search like RBC scholarships if not visiting that convoluted link there. Um, but uh, there are some uh, particular scholarships that we actually have that are geared towards, um, you know, different supporting different members in our community. So. If you look at the one there about the Capital Markets Diversity Scholarship, that might be something for someone who's taking business. Maybe they're in accounting or they're in another program at the School of Business here at McEwen, and you're interested in some kind of internship or co-op program out east where you know a lot of the major headquarters are, especially for the big four accounting firms and so forth. But uh, this is an opportunity that comes not only with money, but with an also internship and mentorship uh, opportunity. I think they open this up for applications like each year. So if it's not for the upcoming uh, 2022 uh, summer internship, then uh, look at uh, possible future opportunities as well. Um, so in addition to that, there's also the Indigenous Student Award Program. This is ongoing, so this is something that you can also take a look into. Google searching any of these terms will open this up. Uh, for you to see. Um, so there's, uh, there's different means that we are trying to support all members of the community uh, and giving you those opportunities to, uh, you know, take something uh, further in school, whether it be undergraduate or graduate studies. Um, we know that tuition is certainly not going anywhere but up, and uh, we want to try to be able to support and complement the other different scholarships and awards that are available. And we also recommend not only to look through McEwen uh, for those different awards that were discussed, but take a look at uh, Scholarships Canada as well, um, because there is a means for you just to kind of sign up, put in some criteria, what you're doing and otherwise, and find out uh, some more information about different scholarships that could be available from anywhere uh, within the country. Um, so that's uh, one uh, aspect that we really wanted to promote is uh, that whether it be through McEwen, whether it be through RBC or otherwise, um, taking some time to look at scholarships is definitely worthwhile. And when I was in university, I wish that I would have known a little bit more about that because other than the Jason Lang scholarship and then the Alexander Rutherford scholarship, I didn't really get anything else, but that's because I didn't look into it. So take it upon yourself to do so. And you know, it could pay off with thousands of dollars to, to help you out that you don't need to take on more debt as a student just to get through school. Um, education should not be a privilege that comes behind dumb money. Um, so we're trying in different ways to help promote you to be able to go to school, even if you don't necessarily have that money of your own or the privilege of your parents to support you through school. Um, so moving along, now that we've kind of touched on uh, some of the scholarship aspects that RBC offers, uh, I just wanted to discuss as well student credit lines. Um, we're asked about this on a regular basis. And uh, what we like to do in terms of our approach is we want to ask you first if you've applied for student loans through the government. And the reason why we want you to go there first is because there's not going to be any interest paid while you're in school. And so your repayment with interest will happen, of course, after you graduate. Now, it's going to be somewhat similar with student credit lines. However, you are responsible for the interest on your balance through school. And similarly to uh, government student loans, it's usually going to be something like prime plus half a percent or one percent, could even be straight prime. There's uh, actually different programs depending on the type of uh, program you're enrolled in in school, we have different student credit line programs available. So for, let's say, medical or law or other professions, our general program or otherwise. Um, and when you connect with uh, an advisor, uh, whether it be asking us here on campus or another advisor at a local branch that you frequent, um, they can kind of share some more details about that and the limits available uh, to you in addition to the interest rate depend, of course, on the program that you're taking in school. Okay, um, now uh, some things as well, uh, student credit lines, uh, they are going to be for uh, Canadian citizens or permanent residents. Um, I know it feels uh, a little bit like, um, like a little bit of a smack in the face almost as an international student that you can't always apply for different funding options here, but there is the expectation that you do have funding uh, for your education and of course for your living expenses when you come out here as an international student. Um, so this, these are available only to uh, Canadian citizens and permanent residents, um, given the, uh, that we have to uh, you know, kind of have a means for reliable repayment after someone graduates. Um, and uh, the good thing for 
student credit lines with RBC is that I think it was a few years back, we actually extended the grace period before repayment. Um, with government student loans, uh, to my understanding, you have about six months after graduation before repayment starts that may uh, differ depending on the situation. Uh, it's 24 months. Uh, after you graduate. So hopefully within two years, you've found that uh, great career to get started in and have the ability to earn some good income and, and repay uh, any amounts borrowed on those student credit lines. What we'll do is we'll go to the next slide and I'll just explain some of the criteria uh, that uh, would allow you to be eligible for that. Um, so uh, most important thing, of course, is just proof that you are enrolled at a post-secondary institution here in Canada. Um, it doesn't necessarily have to be a university. It can be a college, a trade school, another vocational school. Um, so there's quite a few different, um, I think there's you know dozens of different institutions that are on a list uh, by the federal government that help qualify for um, any kind of student lending. And another thing is we, we kind of put there on the screen is that it's good for us to sit down and kind of talk over a budget and what that's gonna look like in terms of your tuition costs, maybe your living expenses, um, anything revolving around school or you going through it is going to be, um, we'll say qualified for uh, something that you could borrow for from a student credit line. Um, just as an example, we won't necessarily, um, let's say extend a student credit line to someone um, who is looking to buy a car while they're in school. Um, that would be a completely different uh, type of discussion and maybe a loan instead. But it did come up recently from a student that I connected to, so I wanted to use that as an example uh, to bring up. And uh, yeah, so um, yeah, exactly to what Claire said um, is uh, in some cases is that you, you, know, you don't have to repay, you don't have to accrue interest while you're in full-time studies. They don't wanna put any kind of burden on you while you're in school. Um, at very least with student credit lines, whether it's with RBC, your own bank, or elsewhere, um, usually with the interest rate being as low as it is, you're not going to have a significant burden uh, with, uh, with interest, um, but it is something to keep in mind, okay? Um, now, uh, the other thing as well is uh, we just, we just want to make sure that what we're looking at for you is going to be in your best interest. We don't want to extend a massive line of credit to you if it's going to be outside of what you need. But if we do start at a, a reasonable amount for your program, and then maybe you just decide to extend your program, or maybe you go into graduate studies, we can certainly look at extending a higher limit on your student credit line if it's available um, to in order to help you kind of finance that other uh, aspect or the, the future aspects of your, your we'll say your uh, university journey, your university career. Um, so student credit lines, as well as the different scholarships that I discussed, in complement uh, to what's available through student uh, loans through the government of Alberta or federal student loans uh, are great ways in, in, uh, in partnership kind of to uh, help you fund your education, uh, not only your undergrad, but hopefully your postgrad studies as well. Um, and thankfully, uh, in this case, you know, Sana explained how to apply for some of these lean on fees and financial aid um, for their support as they, they shared with you um, in order to kind of get that. That's what we heard from students and why I've partnered on these presentations in the past with one of Santa's colleagues is that a lot of students don't really know what to apply for or how to apply. Uh, and certainly everyone is out looking out in your best interest uh, to help you get those funds to pay for school. So uh, that's a little bit from me, nothing more complicated than that. As I said, um, you can come and talk to me about a variety of different things, including what I've spoken to today. And uh, hopefully you're not hearing too much noise from the, uh, the kids. I think there's some Griffins uh, kids here. They like to come and play on the stairs here in the SAMU building. Uh, last is to finish things off, and then we'll, we'll probably jump over to Q&A soon. Um, this is Kristen and I's email. Again, Kristen is my manager uh, here at the branch, and I, I am the, uh, the advisor here. Um, so I can field your requests by email. Um, doesn't, uh, doesn't hurt to ask me different things. Uh, and like I said, I'm here to talk about more than just banking. If you have some different questions about other things, um, shoot it by my way. Might have an answer for you. If not, I'll find you some resources on campus to get you those answers. And this is our space. This is what you're looking at. I'm standing kind of right at that uh, higher table there on the right front right-hand side. Um, and uh, there's a little ATM on the left. If you happen to need cash on campus, um, little plug there, there's no fees on our end, so it might be a little cheaper than the other uh, third-party ATMs out there. 
Um, we're going to be doing virtual advice events throughout the semester talking about those different topics I spoke to earlier. They will be available in the student guide that I think Sam is going to be giving out. We will be sharing them with the, the first year experience, the Welcome Center, and many other different partners on campus. So I'm sure you'll, uh, you'll come across that schedule in some way. We'll be uh, hosting them over WebEx, usually half an hour to 45 minutes. We, we know that you're going to still have a lot of uh, virtual classes and want to respect your time, but we want to give you some great info. We often play a game of Kahoot afterwards, maybe with some swag prizes uh, for the winner, and then uh, a bit of a Q&A to answer any of your questions. Um, I've been doing them now for, you know, this entire past school year that we were here uh, with some great engagement and, uh, and great feedback. So I uh, encourage you to, uh, to join us uh, if you come across that information or reach out to me by email if you're curious to hear more. Uh, and I think with that, I've had my time. Thanks so much for, for listening, and I hope that all of this was very helpful for you uh, with your, uh, your funding, your education.